Hi guys, welcome back. We're going to continue talking about exponent rules. I'm not really sure why I'm super dark here, but it is what it is. All right, so we're going to talk about two new rules. We talked about product rule and quotient rule in our last video. And today we're going to talk about the zero exponent rule and what happens if we have negative exponents. The zero exponent rule is if anything is to the zero power equals one. So four to the zero power is one, 100 to the zero power is one, x to the zero power is one, and negative three to the zero power is one, okay? And I'm gonna show you why that works, okay? So remember way back when, which was yesterday's video, if I had three to the fifth over three to the fifth, we agree that, well, five minus five is zero. So this becomes three to the zero. Okay. Now, if we didn't have the quotient rule, if we didn't know what that was yet, we know that 3 to the 5th over 3 to the 5th is 1 because we know anything over itself is 1. So therefore, if 3 to the 5th over 3 to the 5th equals 3 to the 0 and it equals 1, 3 to the 0 has to also equal 1 in order for all of math world to work beautifully. Okay, So that is why anything to the 0 power is 1. So please, please, please do not put your answer as 0. Okay, because that's what most students do. Anything to the zero power is one whole. Okay? And that can be tricky for some people. Okay. Now, negative exponents. In the math world, they have decided they do not like your answer to be a negative exponent. Okay? They just don't. They don't like negative exponents. So we want to make them positive. Okay? So what you do is you always put a number over one if there's no denominator. Well, whatever base has a negative exponent, so 4 to the negative third has a negative exponent, I move it down and it can become positive. Since there's nothing left on the top, we put a 1 there. Now, some of you are going to be Miss Halls, I just flip it. Well, you only flip the stuff with the negative exponent. If there's other stuff with it, which we'll learn later, you only move the stuff with the negative exponent. If it has a positive exponent, leave it alone. Okay, so this is 1 over 4 to the third. This would be... Go ahead and try this one. So this is over 1. 6 has a negative exponent, so it's going to become 1 over 6 to the 5th. Okay? The reason this one works is if we had, like, 6 to the 8th over 6 to the 13th, right? You know, let's make these a little bit smaller. Let's make this just so we don't have to write so many 6s. 6 to the 3rd and 6 to the 5th. Okay, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? And this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, I don't know why. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I don't know why I counted weird on that one. Sorry, guys. Remember this? This canceled out. Okay, and that would mean we'd have a 1 on top with 6 to the 3rd on the bottom. But yesterday, we would have subtracted our exponents. Well, 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Sorry, this I we're at one too many sixes here. I apologize, guys. I'm a hot mess. All right, six to the two. Okay, so that's why those are equal. Why the negative we can just move down to the bottom. Okay, now let's look at another example here three over x to the negative four. Three has an invisible one exponent. Anytime something doesn't have an exponent, there's always an invisible one. Okay, so the only thing with a negative exponent is x to the negative fourth. Well, if it's in the denominator, we can move it up to the numerator. And the 3 is going to stay because it doesn't have a negative exponent, so it doesn't need to move. Okay? And we could put this over 1 since we moved it out of the denominator, but you don't have to. They mean the same thing. Okay? So if it's in the numerator, move it to the denominator, becomes positive. If it's in the denominator, move it to the numerator, becomes positive. All right. Now this one, we have to do some extra work here. <coughs> well, I know from quotient rule that 6 minus 8 is negative 2, so I'd have 3x to the negative 2. But I know in the math world we don't like negative exponents, so this is over 1. And since the x has a negative exponent, it's going to move on down. Now, one little hint I can give you here is notice x to the 6 over x to the 8. There was more x's in the denominator, and I could be like, well, I know the difference is 2, so I can just leave the 2 in the bottom because I know it's going to stay where there are more x's. Okay, so you actually can skip this step if you want and just go right to here if you realize, well, there's more x's in the denominator, so my x's will stay down there. Okay? Up to you how you think about it. All right. Now, when we have a fraction, okay, 
um, we can distribute this negative 3 to top and bottom. So this would be 1 to the negative 3 over 2 to the negative 3. Okay? And then we're going to flip-flop both of them since they're both negative. So this becomes 2 to the 3rd over 1 to the 3rd. Okay? All right. Don't know if I had any more for today. I did not have any more for today. I feel like, yeah, there's an extra page there. All right. I hope this video finds you well, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.